Welcome back to Africa 54. Linomu Du is off today. But uh, the smoking of shisha, a type of flavored tobacco, is the latest craze sweeping across Kenya. Patrons are flocking to shisha parlors to smoke and socialize. But the practice can be addictive and harmful, though many dabblers may, may not realize the dangers, according to a new review. Lenny Rovaga reports from Nairobi. 26-year-old Ian Shewaine has skillfully mastered the art of setting up his shisha pipe. Shewaine, who runs an events management company, is an enthusiast of shisha. For the past four years, he has been using shisha as a recreational drag. A shisha kit such as this one costs around $10 and the various flavors range between $5 to $10. Shewaine says... He quit smoking conventional cigarettes and turned to shisha due to its recreational nature. Um, I like the head rush the product gives. Also the wide variety of flavors I can actually change depending on how I feel and depending on also what my friends feel because I can't go to the club and smoke it alone or even in the house. It's more of a rec recreational drug. Shisha smoking involves a glass bottomed water pipe, a hooker in which flavored tobacco is covered with a paper foil and roasted using coal. Before it's inhaled, the tobacco passes through a water port. Shisha smoking has gradually become popular in Kenya among young people, especially in the capital. Most bars set up lounges for shisha smokers. Smoking at home is on the rise too. But there are dangers. Last year, Kenya's Ministry of Health banned 19 flavors found to have been laced with heroin and marijuana. According to the World Health Organization, one hooker session typically lasts 20 to 80 minutes, and a hooker user may inhale as much smoke during one session as a cigarette smoker would from a hundred or more cigarettes. Kenya regulates tobacco through a 2007 law. Public places for tobacco use have been set up in the capital, and all tobacco-related products carry a health message warning of its adverse effects. Still, about 2.5 million Kenyan adults use tobacco, according to the 2014 Global Adult Tobacco Survey. Dr. Richard Gakunju is a clinical pharmacist and director at the Movement Against Substance Abuse in Africa. For the past 12 years, he has also been the lead consultant for Kenya's national campaign against drug abuse. He was quick to point out that smoking shisha could lead to cancer. There are very many uh, health effects. Uh, we know that primarily the uh, nicotine is the major cause of cancers, many types of cancers. Uh, we know that uh, lung disease, uh, what you call upper respiratory uh, uh, infections and all that uh, are related to the use of uh, tobacco products and shisha is a major tobacco product. Cigarette sales are declining in many parts of the world but shisha smoking remains popular. According to a 2014 study by the University of Florida about 100 million people worldwide use hookers each day. Lenny Ruvaga for VOA News, Nairobi, Kenya. Now, every year, the World Health Organization and its partners mark World No Tobacco Day. The day is meant to highlight the health risks associated with tobacco use and advocate for effective policies to reduce tobacco consumption. For World No Tobacco Day 2015, the WHO is calling on countries to work together to end the illicit trade of tobacco products. For more insight into the significance of World Tobacco Day, I'm joined by Joshua Chalo, the Director of Africa Programs at the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids. Uh, welcome to Africa 54, um, Joshua. Thank you. Now, first, uh, we just saw that report uh, from Kenya. There was um, a report a couple of years ago from the American Cancer Society that warned that Africa uh, will face a severe health threat from increased smoking. Is there any indication that uh, that threat is not there anymore? I think Africa is increasingly becoming the attraction of the tobacco industry. When you look at what's happening globally, we're dealing with a very uh, poisonous product. Tobacco, the science is very clear. So tobacco mm -hmm. kills, causes disease and disability. Yeah. And as other jurisdictions around the world are put in place, strong laws. Yeah. Uh, from this country, in the United States, across all 
uh, all over the world, the tobacco industry is focusing on Africa. It's focusing on Africa, and we can tell that because, uh, for example, if we go to Kenya, the Tobacco uh, Control Act of 2007, which was meant to regulate uh, tobacco use and help uh, reduce the consumption, actually took about 13 years to pass, and uh, the Minister of Health or Public Health and uh, Sanitation says it was because the tobacco industry was intimidating and interfering with the process. Can you win against the tobacco industry? Yes, well, the experience shows that you can. And if you speak specifically about the Kenya situation, you're absolutely right, mm -hmm. Vincent. It took Kenya that long to enact the tobacco control law. It also took Kenya eight years to get the regulations uh, issued. The Minister of Health issued regulations in December last year. And when you look at what has been happening all this time, the tobacco industry has been fighting every way. They undermine government's efforts to put in place strong measures to protect public health. Right now, as we speak, the British American Tobacco has gone to court to challenge the Minister of Health and the Kenya Tobacco Control Board in an attempt to stop the adoption of tobacco control mm -hmm. regulations. Yeah. Now, uh, among uh, your objectives as uh, uh, the, an organization is actually to first to not only expose those co uh, tobacco company or businesses uh, uh, methodologies, but also to uh, empower a generation of young people that will be smoke or cigarette free. How do you do that? Well, uh, through the, uh, the implementation of the Framework Convention of Tobacco Control, that's the primary starting point. The international community uh, ratified uh, more than 90% of the world's population jurisdictions ratified the former Convention of Tobacco Control by the World Health Organization. And what we are trying to do is to encourage governments to put in place laws in every country to protect their citizens. Mm -hmm. That's the first, first measure. Yeah. And also to stop the addiction and initiation of young people because the tobacco industry is always targeting young people. The moment they hook them, they are addicted for life. Because that's all you need. Just Absolutely. make the kid. Absolutely. Just get a kid, start smoking. Smoke a few times. Then and they have profit for the rest of their lives. Yeah. And we are saying to governments, put in place strong tobacco control measures for the interest of the population, mm -hmm. for public health. But this is the other insidious thing that I think uh, happens between government and tobacco industry, especially in Africa. The tobacco industry works closely with politicians, uh, legislators, in actually advancing other things, other developmental programs in society. Now, with those kind of fringe benefits that uh, the, the government gets out of us, uh, the tobacco industry, how do you go about Vincent, uh, regulating The this? tobacco industry has very sophisticated tactics of trying to uh, delay the adoption of strong tobacco, uh, passing the strong tobacco control laws. Yes. And the relationship with the government is always uh, protected within the Framework Convention of Tobacco Control. Article 5.3 says that the government should always act in the interest of public health. Now, there is no benefit from experience in terms of what we're calling uh, benefits for governments. Mm -hmm. For example, we encourage governments to increase taxes so that they, it is proven to be the most effective way of stopping tobacco use. It's also the way to get revenue for the government. But the tobacco industry tried to use all sorts of methods, including what they call social corporate, res corporate responsibility. Exactly. It is clear that from, ex from evidence, for every uh, one dollar that the tobacco industry gives to governments in terms of uh, taxes, the government will spend about three dollars trying to address public health issues, cancers, and all the other e problems mm -hmm. resulting from tobacco. Yeah. So it's, it's a zero-sum loss for so, governments. You know what? It's a big fight. We wish you all the best, and we hope uh, the young people out there will listen to your messages. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chalo. Uh, well, uh, Joshua Chalo is the Director of Africa Programs at the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids.